the next character I'll talk about is Captain Olimar. Um, he was one of the newest characters of Nintendo at the time, being a launch like GameCube character on Pikmin 1 on the GameCube, and then eventually a sequel for Pikmin 2 actually ended up coming out on you know, the GameCube. And he was basically, for character choices in um, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, he was actually, out of the newcomers, one of the most recent uh, Nintendo characters at the time. He was one of the newer Nintendo characters at the time, starting around like 2001 with the launch of the GameCube, 2004 sequel, um, and there you go. He was, he was for the GameCube, Game Boy Advance generation. Not so much for Game Boy Advance, but I'm tossing it in there because it is the same generation. He was one of the new franchises, new IPs from the Pikmin series that actually made its way and came out during that generation so they kind of wanted to represent one of the newest characters one of the newer characters at the time and he was pretty popular because people actually kind of liked the Pikmin series and he was basically in both 1 and 2 the reason why they pretty much would not have included uh, they would not include Louie was because he was only in 2 and he did not play as probably a biggest role as Olimar because Olimar was the main character for both so he kind of had a little more reasoning behind him than, say, let's just say Louis, which just would have represented one of them. He represented both. And like I said, he represents a new Nintendo IP that came out that generation that they were picking characters from. And they didn't want to just pick characters from franchises that had been around forever. They wanted to say, okay, let's pick a new franchise, a new IP that was made that generation. Hey, look, there's Pikmin. Let's grab Olimar. You know, he has an interesting potential with the moveset with Pikmin. Let's do it. Reason why Alomar was included. Uh, Wolf will be the next character I talk about from the Star Fox series. Um, he um, he has had history with the with the Star Fox series because he's been around since day one, and he's been recent enough because in like every single. Star Fox game, or at least mostly every single Star Fox game, he actually was there. And the char the, the game they mainly pulled him from was Star Fox Assault. He, I don't remember him being in Adventures. I don't think he was in Star Fox Adventures, but he was in Star Fox Assault on the GameCube. So he was recent enough to be included in there, outside the fact that he's important to the series and it's been around since day one, basically. And he also is a villain rep, which at that point, Star Fox had none because they had Falco, which was like the sidekick in the Lee, but they didn't have a villain rep for the Star Fox series yet. So Wolf being the villain rep slash rival to Fox, it was pretty much being the best inclusion that they actually could do for a newcomer because he was so relevant to the series for a long standing time and he was recent enough on the recent game technically at the time Star Fox Assault. And I think he might have been in command too on the DS, which might have been a small, another small reason why the DS was included. But he played more of a big role in Assault, which was the previous generation. He's a villain rep rival to Fox, long-standing important to the series, as another villain to the entire Smash Bros. franchise. And Wolf is included. When it comes to the Pokemon trainer, I, I see it as uh, they wanted to finally include like a human character from Pokemon. Because basically when you play Pokemon, the Pokemon are the actual characters that battle, but when you're actually playing the games, you're playing the human role using those Pokemon. So they kind of wanted to include that trainer feel to the game, like an actual trainer that's actually using this Pokemon. And it kind of brought the starters out for Generation 1. And the reason why Pokemon Trainer was Generation 1 in this game was because of the Generation 1 remakes on the Game Boy Advance people. That's the reason why he was Generation 1. The Fire Red and Leaf Green games on the Game Boy Advance were the reason why it was the Generation 1 Trainer. And it was the recent version of the character Red. 
the reason why they didn't include his old look or make him look older like the Game Boy original self is because the Game Boy original Red was too old for them to go and pull him from. Generation 1 was still recent though because they brought it back. They did a remake and it was the reason why the Pokemon trailer was mainly like, like was Generation 1 and pretty much the reason why he was mainly included in the first place because of the Generation 1 remakes on the Game Boy Advance, Fire Red and Leaf Green and the reason why he was the recent trainer. And they kind of, I don't know exactly why they would have went with the order of like, like Squirtle, Ivysaur, and Charizard, but I think the reason why Charizard was the one included is because that's like the most most popular of the three original Gen 1 starters, and his final evolution pretty much is his most like famous, popular version, so they wanted to include him, and people probably like Squirtle more so than let's say Ivysaur, and since Charizard already took the final evolution, they gave it to Squirtle, and they just tossed Ivysaur in there as the second evolution. <coughs> so it was like that. But he was there mainly to represent the recent, like, game at the time, which has history with Nintendo because Generation 1 came back out on the Game Boy original, and they brought that back for Game Boy Advance with the remakes. And it kind of, like, is the more important popular Pokemon, so they just decided to grab, like, the original starters, make it a trio team, and made it based off the newer version of Red and not the original, because it's the more recent version of Red from Fire Red and Leaf Green. <coughs> and there you go. Lucario now was the other new Pokemon character added in Bra, and he got the Mewtwo treatment. Lucario was the character that got the Mewtwo treatment in this game. Mewtwo was included in Melee because he was a popular, like, legendary Pokemon in the Generation 1, which was still relevant at the time because it still kind of played a prominent role in the Game Boy Color because you could kind of connect Game Boy to Game Boy Color for Gen 1, Gen 2. And besides that, he was a popular legendary, one of the first legendaries, and he had a movie at the time, eventually later on the second movie, but that did not play a role in Melee because <coughs> it wasn't out at the time, I don't think. When it came to Lucario, he represented the recent generation at the time, which was Generation 4 on the DS, and that was the prominent reason why the DS was re was represented in this game. It was because of Pokemon. <coughs> the little small Rob reasons, and all the little things I've been mentioning up to this point for other characters include, were such minor roles that they could almost be non-existent. The main reason why I say the DS was represented was because of Lucario, the recent generation being four, he was one of the most popular Pokemon of that generation. He was kind of, he wasn't a legendary per se, but he was one of the most popular Pokemon of that generation. He did have kind of a legendary status, but not by much. On top of that, just like Mewtwo, he had a movie that came out like beforehand, and he was it was pretty much the main reasons for why Lucario was there. Recent generation four. Pokemon movie that came out. Popular enough, semi-legendary. There you go. <coughs> now the newcomer from Fire Emblem Ike will be the next character I talk about. Uh, when it came to Melee, Roy was added because there was a new Fire Emblem game, Fire Emblem 6, coming out to the Game Boy Advance, so they used him as a way of advertising because Smash Brothers tends to be an advertising franchise. They use characters in there to advertise stuff. Two. So, but since he was only on the Game Boy Advance, it didn't have, like, they didn't want to probably include him, because I think at this time, they did not want to include three Fire Emblem characters. Because Roy had the chance of staying back, staying around for Brawl, because it was Game Boy Advance related, and he had a game on the Game Boy Advance, so... So Roy could have stayed around, but they decided to replace him with the most recent character of the time because they didn't want to add three characters just yet to Fire Emblem because this is when this is before it even was released worldwide. Like this is when it was released worldwide. Like that's like this was when it was released worldwide, but they didn't want to include much because it wasn't super popular worldwide yet. The old, most popular country still was Japan, Europe, America, and Australia were just starting to get games. So they didn't want to over, I think, give, like, Fire Emblem characters just yet. With 4, that's possible. 
for Bra it wasn't, and for Mui it especially wasn't, because it was only in Japan at the time. Um, but the most recent game at the time, console-wise, was Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. I mean, for at least previous generation. At the time, Radiant Dawn on the Wii was out, but it was too recent for them to grab anything from, because it was released, like, in 2007. Like, the end of 2007, I remember it being released, so it was too recent with only, like, maybe, like, six months left or four months left of development, pretty much four, you know, bra. It was too recent to grab a character from there. So they took a character that was still in their Ike, went back to the Ra Path of Radiance game, which was the main pa um, Fire Emblem release for the GameCube, because it was the only Fire Emblem game released on the GameCube <coughs> and chose him instead. That's the reason why Ike is his Path of Radiance self and not his Radiant Dawn self because they, like I said, the previous generation wins out and they decided to grab him as his younger earlier self, which is the reason why he's like a slower character. He kind of improves himself in Radiant Dawn. So they decided to include his older self. And at the time, he was still the current main character that kind of went on to the Wii game, but the Wii game couldn't technically be represented because it was too recent at the time. So they went back to the game that was three years older <coughs> and grabbed, because 2005, I think, this game was released. And they grabbed Ike from Fire Emblem. He was the new recent representation, and since he was localized, he was actually able to speak English, and since Marf still at that time had no recent game, was still a Japanese retro character, and had no game outside Japan yet, he still spoke Japanese. But he was, like, Ike was able to speak English because he had a game at the time so they could get a voice actor for him. And he was the most recent inclusion, replaced Roy, so he was the newer character, while I, uh, Mark was the older character in the Fire Emblem representation. Now when it comes to Lucas, a new Mother character, <coughs> Mother 3 was released on the Game Boy Advance, he was the most recent character at the time. Nest hasn't been around since the Super Nintendo. And it was natural to include him because people like the Mother series, although it still isn't released any more games besides the second one outside of, you know, Japan. And technically, like, besides, like, the only one that was released pretty much anywhere else was... The second one, Mother 2, which was released here in America as Earthbound, but even in Amer Europe and Australia, they never got any Mother game. So that series is completely not to them at all, but and only one game was released in America. You know, this, this Lucas was the continuation of a Japanese exclusive character, which starred in Mali. When I talked about Mali, it had Marth and Roy, and at that time, Fire Emblem was nowhere else, it was in Japan, and that was the start of when they started releasing Japanese exclusive characters. And like I mentioned in the end of that video, it continued on. Guess who it continued on with? Lucas. Because at this time, Mother 3 was only in Japan. And they wanted to continue making that Japanese exclusive character. And Lucas was the choice because he represents the recent Mother Edition, which was Game Boy Advance. And obviously, like I mentioned, Game Boy Advance was basically the handheld system they were grabbing characters from. And that's mainly the reason why, because he was the recent mother character. But Ness stayed around because he was an original 12. And when it comes to Lucas, he was kind of a... As far as I've been hearing, he's been want, he was a character that was wanted to be in the series since the beginning. He was actually originally supposed to be in the series before Ness. Because the N64 game, which was what would be Mother 3 on the N64, or found in 64 and all that, <coughs> was supposed to be coming out, so they were going to include him instead in there. But the, the game was pushed back to the Game Boy Advance, so they couldn't put him in there. And since I think he was too far off from Mother 3 at the time of Mali, they couldn't put him in Mali as well, so they included him as Brawl. The game was released, he was Japanese exclusive, he was popular, and he was more recent. There you go. And the reason really why Lucas was included. 